Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the compassionate, the most merciful, to all of our viewers out there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And thank you for joining us again in the intersection of faith and reason, where our guest is our beloved Dr. Sheikh Scholar, um, Dr. Ja'far Sheikh Dries. Dr. Ja'far, it's good to be with you again. And last time we were talking about the Quranic argument for the existence of God. And I believe you mentioned the verse in Surah At-Tur, Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in, am humul khaliqoon. Were they created out of nothing or were they created themselves? And he said, generally speaking, on your studies, observations that most atheists have fallen in one of these categories that the Qur'an has actually given. And interestingly... And I'm talking about contemporary ones. Contemporary... And scientists. Some of them scientists. No. It sounds a bit uh, yes. ludicrous to me that yes. somebody can actually argue yes, saying that exactly. we came out of nothing. Yes, I, I will sh show you some of the, the so some of the uh, w uh, and show some of the words the that words. they have actually promoted no, yes. such an no, idea. No. Interestingly, you also said that in Greek philosophy earlier, they um, even said that there was an argument that the world is eternal and needs not a creator. Yes, they thought that the heavenly bodies, because they know that the trees are not eternal, the water is not eternal, but they um, thought that the heavenly bodies are eternal. Were, were, were eternal, especially the sun. And their argument was that we haven't seen any change. In, in, in The sun has always been like this, so it must be uh, eternal. Mm. And then I gave uh, Al-Ghazali's uh, objection to that, and he said that, how do you know? The sun is a huge body, and it is very far away. So if it diminishes by a small amount every day, you will not be able to realize uh, this. Such, and such but we now know that what Al-Ghazali said is, is true. Is correct. No. I'm wondering if this is why people believe to worship the heavenly bodies. Yes, of course, especially the people of... Um, uh, Prophet uh, Ibrahim, Abraham, and his his father and and, and his people uh, used to worship the heavenly bodies mainly because they felt they were eternal. But I think it could, could be yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting, Sheikh. We would love to hear some of these arguments. No. Now, now we uh, now I think we ca we enumerated some of the mm, uh, pieces of evidence sure. that Al Ghazal uh, that Ibn uh, Taymiyyah mentioned. Now we come to one of the uh, yeah, most famous arguments for the existence of God. I mean famous among, uh, especially the philosophers. Mm -hmm. And it was famous uh, even among the th uh, Muslim theologians and Christian and Jewish uh, uh, theologians. The, army, the argument took many forms, was formulated in many ways, and some of the, uh, of the formulations were wrong. So people thought that because the formulation is wrong, the, arg the argument is false. Um, I will try now to give what I, mean, I think is, is, is the correct form of, of the argument. The yeah. argument goes like this. Sheikh, just, just mm. to remind our viewers, yeah. Ibn Taymiyyah argues, or so far he has given three arguments, yeah. and that is, it is in the innate nature of humans yeah. to believe. Yeah. And then he spoke about ayahs, yes. or the science, now, and now the cosmological argument. Cosmological he, argument. He says uh, th that there is a difference between the cosmological and the uh, and the ayah, as as I said last time, that the ayah points to God directly. The cosmological argument uh, comes to the conclusion that there must be a creator or, mm -hmm. or, or an eternal uh, yani cause or so. So he said that. It is good as far as it goes, but it doesn't go far enough. And I, I will uh, comment on that, uh, inshallah. The, the argument is, is like this. Uh, it says there are temporal things. Temporal things, things, things that have a beginning. Mm -hmm. This is something temporal. It was not there. It is now there. Okay. Time. A temporal thing must have an external cause. It cannot create itself. Sure. Okay. Now, uh, the it, it cannot create itself though it has a, an external cause. Now, the cause, the external cause cannot be itself temporal. Sure. 
because we'll ask the same question about it. About the cause yeah. itself, the external the cause. cause. No. Sure. But some people said, why not? Why not? They said that uh, we can say that, uh, uh, for example, if we, if we, if we say that uh, the temporal thing one, temporal thing one, is caused by temporal thing two, two which is caused by temporal thing three. three, and so on to infinity. So they said, well, what is, what is wrong with this? Uh, the, 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 the series need not end anywhere. So, so that they said that the cosmological argument doesn't prove that, that there must be an external uh, creator of God. And an eternal creator. Eternal creator. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah and many of the Muslim theologians said that this is wrong. Because if you say that T1 is caused by T2, then T1 will not exist until T2 has already existed. existed. Before. Sure. But T2 will not exist until T3 exists, and so on, T4, T5, T4, T4. So they said that there is in fact no series. This is, th 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 there is nothing. So if, uh, but the fact is that there is something. Mm -hmm. There is something. Mm -hmm. So this cannot be the case. Because if, 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 uh, uh, every temp if every temporal thing was caused by another temporal thing, and so on, then, then there would have been no temporal things at all. Uh, can I uh, repeat it? Again? Please, please. Yeah. So I, I, do, we I, have, I, do we have a graph for this, I think? Yes. We do, I believe, we do have a graph for this that we'll be showing mm. to our viewers as the right. Sheikh is right. explaining this. Now, but Sheikh, if, if I understood yeah. you correctly, you said a temporal thing mm. in itself cannot be... Um, not, not the creative, it but... Must be cause. It, it must, must be, be caused. It must be caused. But it cannot cause itself. Sure. So it must be caused by something... External. External to it. If that something ex external is itself temporal, it will have to be... Required that something uh, else has uh, uh, okay. caused it. Now, I, in, 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 in a book I, that I wrote uh, in Arabic about this, I, I liken this uh, to uh, a poor person who is found to be in possession of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. We say, you are a poor person. Where did you get this? Money from. M m m he says, I got it from person two. But that person two is also poor. Where did he get it from? Where did you get from? Person three, who is also poor. So this will not, even if we go for thousand or a million uh, persons who are poor, that will not solve the problem where the million dollars came, came from. from. Because they're all individually no. No. are not capable of... No. So and, unless yeah, and someone says, I robbed a bank or so, <laughs> then that will solve, so, solve the problem. But if the police is investigating the matter, he will not be convinced um, if every poor person refers him to another poor person or so. So this is uh, the same with, with these uh, temporal things. Now... Some, uh, uh, some of them uh, so some didn't uh, get the argument uh, c correctly. They said uh, uh, as if the conclusion that the, the ultimate cause must be eternal, as if it is something arbitrary, that we just said that there must be an eternal, uh, eternal thing. Simply saying, yes, because this does not make sense. No. So let's, no. Mm. No, they don't say this. If mm. they said it doesn't make sense, well, that would be a good argument. Mm. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah said, uh, we are saying that the existence of temporal things is itself a proof that there is an eternal thing. Mm. Because these temporal things would not have existed at all if there was no eternal thing. So we are not just saying that there is a God and he is eternal and so on. We are, we are proving his uh, eternity 
by the existence of, of, of the temporal things uh, himself. So our, uh, our evidence for the existence of a term, uh, <laughs> eternal. An, an eternal cause is the, the existence, existence of, of temporal the... things. Gotcha. Now, he says uh, that, th this by the way they call infinite regress, mm -hmm. infinite regress. Um, he said that uh, a series like this can go to infinity if everyone was caused by the eternal eternal cause. He's outside this temporal uh, he's outside uh, this uh, line. Uh, yes, uh, uh, this chain. He's outside mm -hmm. the chain. He created this before it he created this before it he created this before it he created this. There is no logical problem here. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, some uh, when a, fa a very famous uh, physicist uh, said, I have an alternative. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, yeah, and you need to go uh, this way, this in way, a chain, in a chain to infinity. Why not say, make it like a loop, he said, say E1 uh, was caused by, no, E1 caused E2. E2 cost E3, E3 cost E4, E4 cost E1, which cost E2, which cost E3. And, and now it becomes, it becomes circular. So, so there is no problem. I'm sorry, it. just if we, can, if we can show this to our viewers as you're watching this with us um, as well there. Yeah. So E1 cost E2, E2 cost E3, E3 cost E4, E4 cost E1. Now, in my book I said, uh, this cannot be the case because let us go backward now. Let us go backward. Okay. Say E1 was caused by E1 would not have existed had it not been for E4. E4 and E4 would not have existed had it not been for E3. And same with E2, the same with E1. So nothing exists. Sure. Now. If you say E1 caused E2, E2 caused E3, E3 caused E4, E4 caused E1. That was already caused. Uh, that was, <laughs> that, uh, so, so E4 caused E1, but E4 it is itself the result of uh, E1, E2, and E3. E3. Yes. So, 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 and this is a very famous uh, physicist. Mm -hmm. he, he wrote a book uh, called God and the, uh, and the New Physics. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it was his book uh, that made me think of um, writing a book on uh, uh, physics and the uh, existence of the Creator in Arabic because I realized that there is very little physics in it. And mm -hmm. I am not a physicist. I realized that uh, he relies heavily on... Uh, on on, on, on the ideas and the arguments of um, Western philosophers. And mm. I am familiar with that. So I said to myself, why not write a I book and point. give the ideas of the Muslim uh, philosophers and theologians. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and that's what uh, I did. Ma many people in the West are not aware of this. They don't know that. And it is our mistake, in fact. Uh, our mistake meaning the... I mean, we did not, um, they don't think uh, that there are Muslim intellectuals, for example, like Ibn Taymiyyah, because they don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know about him. They know about their own uh, philosophers. And, uh, and, and they think that these are the greatest uh, minds and so on. Uh, and so I think it is, uh, it is our mistake that uh, people uh, in the West don't know much about. Uh, so I, th I, I hope that... Uh, Huda will <laughs> uh, shed some so light on yeah. these great Muslim now, philosophers. Sheikh, now if you just, okay. I'm sorry, if you just hold on to that thought, we would like to visit it again and the fact that many people think that there was no contribution on the Muslims' part in either the refutation or counter-argument of mm -hmm. these theories that mm -hmm. are out there. With this, we will take a short break and we will come back. Please stay tuned and we will see you shortly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back again to the intersection of faith and reason 
with our beloved guest, Dr. Jafar Sheikh Idris. Uh, Dr. Jafar, you were talking earlier about uh, Muslims uh, and, and, and our fault in the fact that we have not exposed great thinkers like Ibn Taymiyyah and uh, Imam al-Ghazali mm. um, to the Western philosophy, mm. either in refuting or counter-arguing these arguments. Mm. I wonder what could be done. What could be done? People like you should write about <laughs> <coughs> You are living in the West. You study uh, the works of these uh, people. Some, of course, some of the Orientalists did this. Uh, but they did not uh, write popular uh, books. Or, or, and, and some of them, Orientalists, were not themselves philosophers. So they did not popularize uh, the ideas of the of the Muslim philosophy, because uh, there are many ideas. You, you I mean, people uh, will wonder uh, that some of the ideas that uh, they attribute to some of the philosophers were expressed by Muslim philosophers yeah, way back then. Well, before them, a long time before them. And one of the things that I realized, uh, something I found very strange, that. Um, the ideas of uh, contemporary philosophers on uh, what some of the Greek philosophers say, the criticism of uh, Greek philosophy uh, is very much like the criticism of the Sunni uh, theologians. You see, the, the, the non-Sunni theologians followed the Greeks mm -hmm. and defended some of the, their views. Contemporary Western philosophers discovered that these, some of these ideas were fallacious. They criticized them. And so the nearest people, <laughs> the, the nearest uh, uh, I, uh, Islamic ideas about philosophy to Western philosophy are these ideas of the Sunnis, not the Mu'tazilite or the, or the or other groups or the other, or the other, other groups and some of them wonder when uh, I studied in, uh, in uh, uh, London uh, School of Economic and Social Sciences and there was a very famous uh, professor of philosophy called uh, Popper and he had an idea of which he was uh, very proud he used to say, it is wrong to say, as some of the Greeks said, that uh, knowledge starts with definitions. Mm. Before you talk, you must define your words. And he used to say, this cannot be so. Because if I define my words, I have to define them in other words. And then if you ask me to define each of the, say I used five words, East of the five words, that would be 25 words. And then each of the 25 words, so... so it go on forever. Matter. So I went and told him, I, 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 mean, uh, I, I didn't want to embarrass him and tell him in front of uh, people. So I, I told him uh, that we had uh, a very famous Muslim theologian who said the same thing a long time ago. <laughs> and Ibn Taymiyyah said... Uh, uh, the knowledge does not uh, start with definitions because to define you have to know. Yeah, that was his argument. To define, you'd have to know. You have to know. So uh, knowledge is before definitions. And I, I didn't want to embarrass him, but he embarrassed me. He said, "I don't know anything about Ibn Taymiyyah." This is your fault. <laughs> why, why don't you write about your people? And so, so, so. Uh, so you, you know, what you, you said is, is, is true. Yes, is, and is there much like, lost because huh? of this? No? Is there much that is lost because of these ideas not getting exposed to the people out there? Uh, lost in what sense? Lost meaning that the ideas of Ibn Taymiyyah and Ghazali and their likes. The fact that they're not being exposed, people are not getting familiar with them. Uh, they are not lost. They are in books. But um, in fact, many, even many Muslims don't know much about them. Because 
uh, we are not very much concerned about, of course, in the Muslim world, we are concerned uh, yeah, mostly about practical uh, things. We have been colonized, we want to free ourselves from uh, communism, we have dictatorship, we have uh, this. So there isn't much time uh, for, <laughs> for uh, any pure intellectual uh, matters like that. But uh, if a Western uh, philosopher reads uh, Ibn Taymiyyah or so, he will find himself at home. And, and I have, a, a, again, a, an experience like this. Um, one uh, professor of philosophy visited us in the University of Khartoum, and he asked me, uh, I, I gave uh, one of the students something near distinction, but slightly less. He said, uh, why don't you uh, invite him and argue, uh, yeah, and discuss this matter with him and, and give him these two or three uh, marks. And please make it in English. The, 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 the course was in Arabic. Hmm. And I, I invited him. Uh, this man is now the uh, minister of uh, the interior, Zubair <laughs> Bashir. <laughs> Did he give him the marks? Uh, when, uh, <laughs> yes, we started talking. Al-Ghazali, Popar, Ibn Taymiyyah, Kant, uh, so, and the, yeah, and he was very impressive. The visit, or oh, the, the, the student. The student was yeah. very impressive. And when we finished, and he went out, he said, of course you give him this. <laughs> <laughs> and one, another, um, another colleague was also in the Department of Philosophy, was British, and he said that, uh, the thing that he uh, learned, uh, the most valuable thing that he learned by being in, in, in the Sudan and in that department, is that um, he said that this, the human mind is the same. Mm. We in the West sometimes think, in fact, some, some people in the West used to think that even logic is something Western. Interesting. Mm. And, and, and a famous Orientalist like, uh, like uh, Montgomery Watt, uh, said something about the Arabs that for them contradictions don't mean any much. In fact, uh, if there are contradictions, this, this, this is a sign of richness uh, and so on. And of course, this is totally, uh, totally uh, wrong. Uh, so it is, it, I think to, to some extent, it is uh, our, our, our mistake uh, th that... Uh, now, can we go, uh, uh, we're talking about the cosmological argument. Yes, we are. And I said that uh, uh, I presented what I thought was the correct uh, formulation of the argument. But there are wrong formulations. Some of them are very famous. For example, someone says, everything has a cause. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the essay is to say, or. If everything ha has a cause, then God has a cause, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it, God is something. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's right. If you say everything has a cause, God's, God is something, then he must have the beginning, a, 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 cause. a cause. So <clears throat> the, uh, that destroys your argument. Uh, the correct thing is to say and every event has a cause, or every temporal thing has a cause. Not everything has a cause. Because an eternal thing doesn't have, uh, doesn't have a cause. Uh, if something is eternal, this means that it depends for its existence on itself. Uh, and that's what is called in uh, Quranic terminology, Qayyum. Qayyum, they say, uh, who is self-sufficient. Uh, he, do he doesn't need uh, yeah, and something from outside uh, himself to depend uh, to depend on. And this is one of the um, attributes of God. Yes, that are mentioned in the Quran. No. Mm. Uh, now, Ibn Taymiyyah said about the cosmological argument, as I uh, said earlier, that it doesn't go far enough, because the only thing that it proves is that there must be an eternal cause. It points out, generally speaking. Yeah. But it does not specify. Yes, and, and in fact, uh, what he said, 
was uh, the same thing was said by some Western philosophers uh, who criticized the cosmological argument. Uh, some of them said, then, yes, okay, the conclusion is that there must be an eternal cause. Why should that be God? Sure. Yeah. Why, why, why can't it be this or that? Now, in my, in, in my book, I said that we can uh, go from that conclusion of the uh, cosmological argument to the other attributes of the creator. So the cosmological argument would be a first step to lead to yes. pointing out directly yes. so I, to God. So this means that in this, I'm not yani, totally in agreement with, uh, with Ibn Taymiyyah. Because Ibn Taymiyyah says that it doesn't go far enough. But perhaps he meant what I have just said, that it proves that there is an eternal thing. But then I said that we can go, and I will uh, yani, uh, prove this. It goes from, yani, we make the conclusion of the cosmological argument as an introduction, first and step, yes, to talk more about the, the other the attributes. attributes. And if we can uh, uh, prove that those attributes cannot be had by anything except the what whom they call the god of religion, then we have proved the existence of the Creator. Mm. Sheikh, this is getting better and better, and mm. time keeps going faster and faster by as this argument is getting there. So inshallah, with this we would come to the end of this episode of our program, hoping that you would join us again next time, as we will be talking about the attributes of God uh, as presented in um, the Quran. With this we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, and so long. Mm -hmm.